Welcome to today's podcast. I'm Ben Stockwell, and I'm joined by Sarah Bassetto from the Southern Connecticut softball team. Sarah, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. You know, good weather, nice fall weather. Um, you know, how's the school year been for you guys, or for you thus far, um, you know, at Southern? Uh, it's been pretty good, actually. I mean, obviously a little bit different considering the circumstances, but I think Southern's doing a really good job of trying to make it feel normal. Um, but still keep everybody safe and follow all the guidelines and everything. Um, so it's been an adjustment, but it could be worse. Are you currently on campus? And, you know, has your team been able to practice at all? Yes. So um, we've actually been going in phases. Um, currently, we're doing full team practice. So I've been on campus for that. Um, it's been, I think it's been like two weeks now we've done full team practice. And obviously, you know, we have to wear our masks and whatever, when we're next to people, but softball kind of makes it easy for us to social distance. You know, uh, if I'm at shortstop, I'm nowhere near the second baseman. So um, our sport is a little bit easier to manage as far as social distancing and not being in close contact with people goes. Um, and it's been really fun. It's been great to be with the team again to get back out there. I was just going to say how great it's to be back with the team and have that kind of joy and being able to practice after, you know, your season ending so quickly you know, last spring. Yeah, no, it's been awesome. The season ending was a heartbreaker for us. We were seven games in when everything happened. We were just about to leave for spring training in Florida. So yeah, we were heartbroken, but we're really, I think all thankful, um, especially me and the other senior on our team that we got our year back. Yeah, that's, you know, that that's huge. And just being able to, you know, finish off your career and, you know, more on, on your own terms, kind of just going I guess backwards overall, you know, where are you from? Um, you know, and what was it, what was it like growing up for you? So I am from Waterford, Connecticut. I went to Waterford High School. Um, it's a really small town. Everybody knows everybody. Um, and I started playing sports pretty much when I was a little kid. So something that's kind of cool about my family is that my brother right now, he's a junior at Southern New Hampshire on the basketball team. So he plays in the NE10. Um, my dad, played at Quinnipiac when it was an NE10 school. And my uncle played, my dad played basketball. My uncle played baseball at University of New Haven. I think it, it was the NECC when he played, but it's the NE10 now, so I still count it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so me, my brother, my dad, and my uncle all played at now NE10 schools, um, or Quinnipiac previously, which is kind of cool. So I come from an athletic family. I was around sports my entire life, whether it was watching or playing or whatever so that's pretty fascinating to have so many different any 10 connections yeah so like when you're when your brother's playing you know at southern are you rooting for southern and just rooting for him to play well overall is that kind of how that goes or so it's it puts me in an awkward position but they did play at southern last year and i did have to silently root for southern new hampshire to win i don't want to admit that but i did I had to go with my brother's team, but I think Southern, it was actually a great game. Southern ended up winning. So I was impartial to like the result of the game, but while the game was happening, I was like rooting for my brother and his teammates because I know all of them. And so, but it was fun to watch and it was cool to have him play at my school and have my whole family come down. And so that was fun. Oh yeah, I'm sure that was family atmosphere. Yeah. That's going to be a great time. What was your recruiting process like? You know, how did you, get to Southern Connecticut? So one of my assistant coaches on my high school team played at UConn with um, Coach Rispoli, our head coach. And she was like, hey, I think Southern would be a great fit for you. Is it okay if I give her a call? Um, and maybe she'll come and watch you play or whatever if she's interested. So Coach Rispoli came down and watched me play. And the next day called me and was like, hey, I want you to come. So I went and visited the school and right off the bat, she sold it to me. She made it feel like home. The team, I felt like I fit in with them right away. Um, and it just felt like one big family and Southern's not that big of a school. So it felt like my hometown where everybody knew everybody. And, you know, it was just one big family. And that's what really drew me to it. Plus it's only like an hour, a little over an hour away from my house. So I was far enough away from home where I could still get that college experience, but still go home if I, if I really wanted to. 
Yeah, that, that's a, that's a good balance there. Yeah. Um, you know, for you, once you got there, you know, it seems like you've started pretty much from day one on on the infield wherever it was. You know, was that was that a factor in you know going there, or was that something you just kind of worked as a goal towards when you were getting into college? Like, I want to be you know, a contributor from day one? Um, I was actually, weirdly enough, I was recruited as a catcher and I only caught a couple games my junior year of high school. Primarily, I played third base or shortstop. I was recruited as a backup catcher. I wasn't supposed to play my first year. And our third baseman got injured in a fall ball game. She was a senior. She like pulled her hamstring in a fall ball game. My coach was like, hey, go in. And I was like, not a, pro- not a problem. I will go out, out right now. And I did really well and she ended up keeping me there. So it was really something that I just, I worked for. I did not want to come and, and sit the bench and watch. That's just not, that's just not me. I want to be out there. You know, what is your approach, you know, as kind of that leadoff hitter and, you know, shortstop leader on the infield there? Just to get the momentum going for my team and, you know, to show them that we can compete with anybody. You know, it's all about your, like you said, your mindset and how you go into the game. If you're not confident in yourself or your teammates, then you're not going to get anything done. You know, you're, you're going to end up hurting yourself more than you help yourself and hurt your team more than you help your team. So I think just being just fearless and just going out there and doing what I've done my whole life and having fun with it and, you know, setting an example for my team and setting the tone for the game is really what I'm thinking when, you know, we start off the game. Is there anyone you kind of try to emulate your play after either as a hitter or as a fielder? Um, Derek Jeter. <laughs> I have been watching Derek Jeter, you know, since I was a little kid and uh, been a Yankee fan my whole life. Still watch the Yankees, love the Yankees. But Derek Jeter was like my idol <laughs> my entire life. There's like pictures of me at like baseball camps with Derek Jeter shirts on. And I had the Jordan batting gloves that he had in high school and aside from pro players or anything like that. Um, I kind of just watched all the girls that were ahead of me and really just tried to take like bits and pieces from their game and just like little tips and little tricks so that I could kind of form my own game from all of those, you know, the Waterford High School team that I watched or college games that I watched on TV or whatever it might be, just little bits and pieces from the best players that were on the field in my eyes and just, you know, incorporating all that into my game. Um, you know, for you, what's, what's the best memory you've had as a member of Southern Connecticut softball so far? Oh, that's a tough one. Just so many good memories. This is, I don't think I have one just really good memory. I think that we have a really great group of girls. We always have, I mean, this is my fifth year now. So I've been with five completely different groups of girls and just the amount of energy that we, they bring every single day onto the field. Uh, we just have so much fun together and mesh well. We all have completely different personalities, um, but we all get along really well. And I think that those are the memories that I'll take with me the most is practice and just messing around and having fun and traveling on the bus you know, whether it's a long ride and we're miserable, but we make it fun with each other, stuff like that are the memories. I don't think there's one specific one. I can't believe I forgot this. Um, I broke the single season stolen bases record. That was probably my, going to be my favorite memory from college softball because I didn't know that I was even close to a record at all. So it was a complete shock to me. Now, you know, for you, obviously, then you, you know, you got some speed on the base pass. What's your approach, you know, with stealing bases in softball where, you know, you can't get a lead, unlike in baseball? Yeah, we can't take leads, but we do have um, 30 feet less to run. Mm-hmm. So, but it's also a shorter throw for the catcher. So I guess my mentality is just get a good jump. You know, if you get thrown out, you get thrown out. What do you have to lose? I've kind of just tried to be smart about it. Um, yeah, and just go and put myself in scoring position to help my team, really, if I can get on second base and if they can squeeze a single in, then I can score and, you know, it makes a difference in a tight game. Yeah, no, that's a great attitude to have. Uh, switching it over to the academic side of things, yeah. um, you know, what what is or, you know, was your major? I know you're in your, in your fifth year. So, you know, kind of what's what's the major situation? Um, and, you know, and then, you know, what are your what are your plans to go on with that? So I am a business management major and I'm just finishing up my undergrad this semester and then I'll go on 
next semester I'll start grad school for my MBA. So uh, right now the plan is my dad owns a restaurant actually here in my hometown. So I may take over for him one day. Um, and I'm also getting into real estate. So that's the plan right now. What I do with my degree, maybe in the long run, I'm not sure yet, um, but I'm getting a lot of good information and insight and learning a lot because I've had to take accounting classes and marketing classes and stuff like that. So like learning how to market myself as a realtor or learning how to, you know, do the numbers for the restaurant or whatever I decide to do. So I'll apply all that stuff to my jobs. You know, for you is, is you know, business, you know, has, like you said, so many different uh, aspects to it. Is there any class either in the business side or something else you've taken that you've really, you know, you really embraced it and really found it very interesting when you took it? Yeah. So I actually, it's funny, it's nothing to do with my major really, but I took a journalism class and the journalism class was really interesting to just learn about that side of things because it kind of tied into the whole marketing thing, you know, just a lot of information about like how, uh, how people perceive you, like how journalists, you know, kind of perceive you and how you perceive yourself might be different. So it's important how you represent yourself, I guess, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a cool class. And then international business, they actually had like corporate people from like Wall Street come in and talk to us about that. And I kind of learned how like international banking and trading and all that stuff works. So that was really cool. I didn't know much about that. Nice. And I, so I was looking on your, some of your bio and I saw, you know, last January you won uh, some kind of award for, uh, it was like social activism. Uh, what yes, was, what was that? How did you, award. you know, get nominated for that? And, you know, what, what's that award all about? So the social justice award is essentially um, given to people who start tough conversations and things that might not necessarily want to be talked about or haven't really progressed, whether that be about gender equality, whether that be about race, things like that, important topics. One of our assistant coaches actually nominated me because our field hasn't, hasn't really been in the greatest shape. Um, and I actually sent an email out to um, the athletic director and head of student affairs and all of them just kind of talking to them about what I've seen um, in my experience at Southern playing on the field and the other, the other teams, like in the, the NE10, like how their fields compared to ours and how um, like the basketball team at Southern got a new scoreboard, but our scoreboard wasn't up and stuff like that. Just kind of talking to them like, Hey, like there's some things that we need to improve on. And we would really appreciate it if you took the time to come in and talk to us and get these things done and we'll work with you to get them done and stuff like that. And, um, and they did, they actually started to progress and um, like get us dugout wraps from dugouts, that's in the plans and get the new scoreboard up and better maintenance on the field. So um, it was just a big step for the program in general. Even if it's not done within the year, my last year, um, I want it to be done for the girls in the future because this program deserves so much better. Nice. No, that's that's great. And, you know, like you said, tough conversations to have, but yeah. you know, also a great experience for you to, you know, kind of make your voice be heard. Do you have any other uh, hobbies or things you like to do or you're involved in when you're not playing softball or, or in school? Um, I just, I really like to work out. I really like to hike and travel. I sing sometimes, sometimes, like big highlight on the sometimes, but those are just some things that I enjoy spending time with my family and my friends. I'm a pretty laid back person. Any, uh, you, know, you mentioned playing some other sports growing up. Is there any other sports you, you really do enjoy playing besides softball? Yeah, I actually really liked basketball. I, I loved it. I was not that great at it, but I loved it. And obviously, you know, like I mentioned before, my dad played and now my brother plays. So my dad kind of always tried to push like both of us to play basketball first. And um, I think he was a little disappointed when I chose softball, but it is what it is. And he's got to get over it. Cause I just wasn't going to make it as a basketball player. You mentioned Derek Jeter is, is there another professional athlete that you kind of, you know, that you admire or look up to either for what they do on the field or, 
you know, the way they conduct themselves? Yeah, uh, another baseball player, actually, <laughs> Nolan Arenado. Um, he was he was a third baseman for the Rockies. He's just I would honestly like there was actually one day where I was almost late for practice because I was sitting at home on my laptop, like watching his highlights. Just so I could then go to practice and try everything that I just watched, but just so much like grit and intensity. And like I said, just being absolutely fearless and just giving 110% every single time. Like heart is just one thing that I've always felt like you can't teach an athlete. You either have it or you don't. And it's just like, it's really inspiring to watch players like that just absolutely like give a hundred percent every single time and make these unbelievable plays, but still be so humble about doing it. That's what I kind of like about him. Uh, you know, speaking of, of TV, is there a guilty TV show or movie that you've kind of gotten into over the last few months? I'd hate to admit it, but I did cave and watch Tiger King and I did get hooked on it. And then what was the, that other one that came out? Outer Banks, that was a good show. I'm, I'm patiently waiting for season two. I guess they're filming, but I'm waiting for it. But then just like classic favorites, like of mine, like Step Brothers, all time favorite, um, like Friends, the show Friends, yep. my favorite show of all time. So I would just watch those and yeah. You know, and kind of finally, what's, what's something you want to accomplish in the next year, either, you know, on the softball field, in the classroom, or just in life in general? So a couple of things, a um, couple of goals I set for myself. Definitely uh, very excited to get my bachelor's degree. That's something that I've really worked hard for. And then as far as softball goes, just I really want to teach as much as I can to the younger girls while I'm still here, especially the freshmen. Like I know I'm not that old, but to me, they seem so young. <laughs> like I literally remember coming in as a freshman, like these girls, I'm, I'm 22, these girls are some of them just turning 18, like they're very young. And so I kind of want to teach them as much as I can and lead them in the right direction. Um, some of the things that I wish I knew coming in. Um, and then just like a personal goal for myself, I am 21, 21, I think, stolen bases away from the all time record at Southern. So I would have the single, I have to beat my own single season record to have the all-time record so that's something that i'm that i'm really going for as a personal goal for myself and hopefully it happens nice well you know hopefully you will have a good rest of your fall ball and i really want to thank you for joining me today just to chat about everything life and school and uh, athletics so appreciate yeah, thanks your time. for having me yeah have a great rest of your fall thank you you too <laughs>